three. Hello everyone, I'm Meredith Foker and welcome to Reclaiming Your Inner Goddess. Top experts reveal how to move through the pain and anger of heartbreak to unleash the goddess in you. I'm honored to introduce my guest today, Anaya Sophia. Are you ready to reclaim your inner goddess? I just want to take a moment to give you a little bit of information about Anaya for those of you who are not familiar with her work. Anaya is a keeper of an oral tradition. She carries a living transmission from the sacred feminine mysteries. She is a wellspring of wisdom and is mostly known for her ability to transmit the merry mysteries and the feminine passion contained within the Christ path. This includes sacred inner marriage, sacred body awakening, womb wisdom, and the conjuring of a divine fire that illuminates both men, women, body, soul, human, divine. Anaya breathes the wisdom of the feminine principle that throughout the centuries has preserved its spiritual dignity without need for permission or recognition from any other source. She is a flame and refuses to be blown out. She recognizes the need for initiation and accepts her desire to facilitate it. Her methods carry the hallmarks of a mystic, so unmistakable in today's sugar-coated world of partial truth and placating love. Her ferocious allegiance is direct experience and radical revelation imparts a wisdom that inflames you. Anaya is, is no spiritual lightweight, though. She has spent the first half of her life soaking up the Christ teachings of the Sacred Heart and Mary Mysteries of the Holy Womb. She now turns her attention to Gnosis, the absolute in-your-face, ob obliterating truth of direct connection. Her realm of transformation lies within the internal conflicts and influences with, within us that resist reality both internally and externally. Her quest beckons us towards the initiatory rites, powerful processes that consecrate our sacred marriage, revealing our divine remembrance in a way that can and must be lived. Her vision as the keeper of initiation includes sacred sexual mysteries of woman, who am I, sacred heart mysteries of Yeswa, where did I come from? Holy body mysteries of Mary. Where am I going? Gnosis mysteries of Sophia. Sacred body awakening, taking the war out, out of man. Alchemy of sacred inner marriage, birthing the divine human. Ex accessing Gnosis, intrinsic self-authority. Darkness initiation, a week-long quest in South France. Flood, fusing the whole Christ path, marrying the Christ body with the Christ soul. Marriage, or sacred, I'm sorry, sacred marriage is the narrow path of a life lived dangerously close to the truth. Her books include Open Your Heart with Kundalini Yoga, Pilgrimage of Love, Womb of Wisdom, Sacred Sexual Union, The Rose Night, and sacred relationships, the practice of intimate erotic love. Anaya lives in the Aquitaine region of South France with her beloved Pete Wilson. Her homeland is a place that is shrouded in the myths and legends of Mary Magdalene, Cather's troubadours, and Knights Templars. Together in union with the land, they take people on their grail quest to an impressive interaction where an initiation by the feminine principle, principle is almost guaranteed. Anaya and Pete have a beautiful bed and breakfast in the south of France called Aquitania, and it is beautiful. I cannot wait to make my reservation. I really can't. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely have to go check it out. Welcome, Anaya. It's such an honor for you to be here today. Oh, Meredith, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And oh, it, of course. Thank you for your wealth of knowledge that you're going to bring to us and your work that you put out in the world. It is so beautiful. <sighs> I am excited to get started. My first question is the obvious. What does reclaiming your inner goddess mean to you? For me, this has been the reclaiming of my true 
compassionate and innocent sexuality, free of conditioning, free of how I'm supposed to show up, so free of the media, free of the patriarchy, and free of any ancestral conditioning or patterning, and also the permission to absolutely speak my full truth as I know it to be in that moment. So it's kind of like a, a womb and a throat journey. Wow, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. I would love to start with your story of meeting your beloved Pete. It is such a beautiful story. And I think, I think if you would take us on that journey, because it really would help our, our viewers, because you went through that deep, dark place of heartbreak, and yet you came out so beautifully on the other side. <laughs> well, I'm living in the French Pyrenees, really in the middle of nowhere. And that is my homeland. So I went there to nurse this dark night of the soul. I was married once before, very shortly, but enough to realize how intense divorce is. Mm, it is yeah. a horrendous process. It is. Especially when you really truly show up for that marriage in, in good faith. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely so, right. Coming through that process, a lot of people were saying to me, hey, you, get off your butt, get back out in the States. Yep. You need to meet somebody. You've been wallowing along for too, too long in yep. this remote corner of Southern France. And so I, I kind of opened. I remember opening to that possibility in March. Mm -hmm. By the time September comes, there really is a knock at the door. Ooh. And it's Pete. Now, how did he find his way to this door? Well, of course, he knew where to come, Facebook friends and mm -hmm. everything. But what is important is that there was that knock at the door. Mm -hmm. So despite me hiding away from the world and putting all of myself into work, that beloved found his way to the door. Ooh. And even before answering the door, I knew this is the beginning of a ch new chapter. And I even knew that there was a choice point. I could pretend I'm not in. <laughs> or I could open the door and say yes to what was standing there. Wow. And that's the message I really want to give to the men and women listening. When it's your time, there is nothing that can stand in the way of that meeting. It is. It's true. It is so true. That's such a powerful message. Yeah. Now, now, would you mind uh, telling us a story of how you found your inner power through that dark place of heartbreak? Oh, gosh, absolutely. I would say the inner process was turning to my beloved Mary Magdalene on the inside mm -hmm. and saying, Mary, I need you to stand aside. Where I'm going, I don't believe you've been. Mm. I need to meet your teacher. I need to meet the one who taught and awakened you. And I remember very distinctively, I was in a pyramid, a real pyramid, on Mount Shasta. Somebody oh. had built a pyramidal structure and they used it for meditation. And they oh, wow. on the geometry of the Pyramid of Isis. Oh, wow. So that's where I did that work. And, and truly, she did step aside in all mm -hmm. of her beautiful redness. Mm -hmm. And this feminine figure, completely drenched in black and gold, stepped forward. And I went, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a moment. Um, and to me, that was Sophia. That was the keeper of intrinsic wisdom. Wow. And it was that that sourced me. Wow. Wisdom, a living trans transmission of wisdom was the healing medicine that brought me back to life, literally. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is powerful. That is very, very powerful. Um, 
I was wondering if you could explain some more of um, the Mary mysteries and the Christ path and how they affect the masculine and the feminine. Well, for me, when we look at the traditional Christ path, we're only being told about half of it. Mm. We're being told what Yeshua was saying and his practices and, and his parables. There is another 50% to that message. And that is the message of the womb and the Mary mysteries, which is about sexuality, intimacy, and the mystical union within between man and woman Mm. so this whole christ path actually included everything imaginable not just open your heart and love thy neighbor as you as you love me Mm -hmm. but the feminine perspective and this has um separated this is the cause of the separation between sex and soul wow This is what's caused this great unrest upon the planet. Wow. Wow. That's so powerful. Wow. Would you mind, would you mind telling us more about that? How did that happen? I don't know how that happened, but what it has done to us, it has taken the holiness out of sexuality. And especially under the reign of the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church has told us sex is bad, it's sinful, Mm -hmm. and it makes you evil and damaged. Yeah. This is a terrible thing to place inside the innocent minds of men, women, and children. Mm -hmm. It creates a taboo of half of our natural nature. Yeah. So there's a schism, there's a splice, there's a a division in our own minds of half of reality. Mm -hmm. The feminine, beauty, nakedness, wildness, passion, sexuality, intimacy. This is half of existence. And if it has been forbidden and cast underground, then that is going to do very damaging work on the inside and cause all kinds of taboos Mm -hmm. from war to rape to pedophilia. This is the root of why these things are here. We have to harmonize sex and soul, passion and purity, wildness and peace. Yeah. So this is something that has affected women in our lineage for years and it, and how, we go about our lives and why we, you know, women so often feel not worthy or they're not enough. Yes. And th- there's a long history in the reason why we tend to feel that way. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I believe this is the absolute agent that makes guilt, shame, and judgment. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. That yeah. is incredible how they could just cut the feminine out like that that's not even cut. this is what's interesting it's not even cut her out it's not even pretend she's not there but to actually take a step further and to say that mary magdalene was a prostitute so they're not saying mary magdalene didn't exist they're saying oh she existed she all right however trash <laughs> yeah oh. you know so they're already implanting this thought yeah. for her. Yeah, so we already have that in our mind that you know we're not even like we're not even human. We're just trash. Yes. yes wow. Yes. Wow. And we've all we've carried that for centuries. That's absolutely that's really powerful. And, and also, I would say it's very much the cause of conflict within the sisterhood. Mm. You know, to compare and contrast the distrust. If we're told that women are prostitutes are dirty, are seductresses, can't be trusted, will, will lead us off the spiritual path, then we're going to turn and look at our fellow sisters and imagine the same thing too. Mm-hmm. They're out to get our men. They're going to steal. They're going to take from us. They're going to... And on and on and on. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't really leave an area of life where you're safe. No, no, it doesn't. 
Yeah. So how do we begin to heal this? Well, well, that is, there's many of us that have put places and spaces out there for us to connect with the real Mary lineage. One that is awake, alive, accessible, attainable, where you get to, to meet all the Marys. Because mm -hmm. even the Mother Mary is not what the Bible suggests she was. Ooh. She wasn't some kind of passive, hapless, virgin, you know, 14 years old, haven't got a clue what's going on, and just accepting, <laughs> you know, to be the vessel. Yeah. As if she didn't give any of her own input into the creation of her son. So the real Marys are actually badass ladies who knew exactly what Ooh. was going on because they were creating the perfect environment for this kind of transmission to come to earth. So they're not hapless victims and prostitutes. Wow. Fully awakened, proactive, priestesses of a very noble line i love that that is it, this needs to be heard it really does it really really does because it explains so much in like i said in our lineage it really explains a lot about you know the issues we have today you yes. know we have today it's 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 crazy where it comes from but wow it explains a lot it really really does there's, there's another little something I'd like to share. Oh, sure, please. Just to see if it changes anything in anyone's mind. Back in the days of the crucifixion, it is absolute Roman historical fact that when the Romans crucified someone, they, those people were naked because it's, the, it's an added insult to injury. It's the last and final humiliation. Mm -hmm. So if we imagine our Jesus on the cross imagery without his shroud around his waist, yeah. can't you see that's going to change everything? Oh, yeah. That's just going to like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Let me just adjust my head around yeah. that. He would have been naked. Everyone who got crucified was naked. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just start ripping those veils off right now. Wow. Although, you know, it does make it does make sense, though, when you think about it, though, yes, that they would want to give you that extra layer of humiliation yeah. and dehumanizing you. It, would, right. it does make sense when you think about yes. it. It does. Yes. But it's crazy to me how much is really, I don't want to use the word sugarcoated, but it's sort of redacted and changed and, and what, is, you know, what is actually out in form that is available now and what we've a lot of us have grown up learning. Yes, it's, yes, yes, yes. It's, it's like really all the false dramatic. systems are falling now. Wow. Our own internal false forms and all the ones out there. Yeah, wow. And, and it's yeah. just, it, I'm still blown away. And it explains why, you know, so much, you know, as females, we just have been discounted and why we carry these deep hurts and these deep wounds. It just, now it all makes sense. Yes. This is riveting to me. It really is riveting. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you had talked about that. If you could explain to us um, that the divine was actually, there's an image of the divine as the feminine. Mm. Sorry, I didn't, what was the whole question? Oh, I said, I know I had read, I had when researching, I said, I had read that you were talking about the divine as the feminine. There's an image of that somewhere. Oh, yeah. Well, that would be the Holy Sophia for sure. Oh, awesome. I mean, the Holy Sophia, yes, she appears as feminine, but that's so that we can conceive her in, in our own minds. Mm. The absolute truth of that is she is even, or not even she, that word she has dissolved. It is even behind the feminine form. Wow. But that is a very important piece of alchemical work that we need to get into. Are we able to really dissolve that very fixed idea that God wears a white dress mm -hmm. and has a long white beard? Mm -hmm. Can you really, in your heart of hearts, also imagine a feminine expression? 
Really? And when that's done, when you truly can see the two, then they become the one. And then finally, woo! <laughs> There's no thing there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is so powerful. So such a powerful reframe for for women. It really is to really to be able to reframe things. It wow. It really is. I would love to talk about your um, beautiful book, Sacred Relationships: The Practice of Erotic Love, because that is such a beautiful book. That is really it's from your journey that shows the beautiful things can come out of it. Absolutely. I mean, the book, this is the latest one that's out this year. Mm -hmm. The book can be, um, it can be read cover to cover, but that is not how we intended it to be. It's meant to be a book that you just hold in a moment of personal or relational crisis and you just randomly flick it up. Flip, flip, oh, flick it open. That's so helpful when you're in those moments oh, that, totally. that you don't have to read it cover to cover. You can just open it up and whatever speaks to you at that moment. And I it's see. all little bite-sized pieces. And when you land on the page, you're going to land in one of three areas. It's either going to be the sacred feminine, the sacred masculine, or the sacred marriage. And you should be able to clearly identify what part is it that is up and active. Mm. And then there's a beautiful prayer and a beautiful action to follow up on. I love that. I love the action. And that's, that's where it all comes together when you have yes. that action piece. And that's when you yes. start shifting and you start moving. That's where, oh, that's beautiful. That, mm. is, that is really beautiful. It is. Mm -hmm. um, can you share with our viewers one way you stay in your power daily? I always begin the day with prayer. So before I even get out of bed, I'm long, deep breathing mm -hmm. and just being in connection with the bed sheets, <laughs> everything that I can actually feel. And uh, my teacher told me, take at least 21 breaths, mm -hmm. long and deep and conscious before you get out of bed and before you get confronted with the to-do list. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah. That Apparently is there powerful. is this little tiny gap the moment we wake up and before the mind kicks in with all of its plans and agendas. Yeah. And so the, the process, the, the practice is to try and elongate that moment, <laughs> get at least 21 neutral long deep breaths in and, and being grateful grateful that you're here for another day yeah that's grateful, a grateful, yeah. grateful and then get presented <laughs> wow it, that, is, that is so powerful because our minds can so easily start spinning the minute we open our eyeballs we all know that that's right the important yeah, and catch that little gap that's a good game you can play with yourself trying to catch that that's that's powerful yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and i love how you mentioned gratitude Gratitude mm -hmm. is essential to be yes. getting into a state of gratitude. And it's so easy when you're going through heartbreak, as you know, to really be think nothing is going right and you're not, you're not grateful for anything. But as soon as you start switching your mind to, be, to, great, to looking for those mo things that you're grateful for, it's a huge yes. help when you're going through Absolutely. heartbreak. It yeah. really is. <laughs> yes. Now, could you share a resource you have used to help yourself realize your own inner power with our viewers? Yes, that Ooh. is the practice. <laughs> that is the practice of Tonglen. Mm -hmm. This is uh, it's coming from Tibetan Buddhism. Okay. So basically, you sit. If you're able to, you would sit naked mm -hmm. in front of a mirror. Okay. Not for you. To see, hopefully, head and shoulders, and better still, all the way. So you're sat cross-legged in front of this mirror, and your eyes are closed. And, you know, you're in a moment of suffering. You're in a moment of doubt, mm -hmm. or division. And so you're very aware of that. But you close your eyes, nevertheless. The first step is to go to your beauty, your innocence, your divinity, 
you know, the good part of you. Yeah. You yeah. close your eyes and you just conjure that part. You make a true and authentic connection. And then you open your eyes. And of course, you see yourself in the mirror. Mm. Now, the one in the mirror is going to play the role of the weary, tired, almost given up, exhausted, fragile human being. So she's going to take on the real human intensity. Okay. And you're going to look at this beloved one through the eyes of the divine one. So the real you, the one that's not in the mirror, is filled with so much love and compassion mm. that she looks at the one in the mirror who does look wrinkly, knackered, tired, mm -hmm. and simply not sure if she trusts the process. And you just beam love at yourself oh. all the way from your glorious soul through your eyes and into your broken wings oh that's beautiful and there, it is. there is not a dry eye in the house yeah it's such a sincere process that is and then that little one the little one in the in the mirror who is broken and and feeling like shit she literally takes all of her pain and suffering and she gives it to you mm. like, like, like a sacred offering. And the divine part of you goes, yes, I'll take that, beloved. I know exactly where to put that. <sighs> and you take all that human suffering and you just whoof, offer mm. it up to the soul. Mm. The soul and the realms of light beyond the soul. Wow. And this, not only does this really work like a technique, mm -hmm. it is the most exquisite <sighs> practice. It's an act of love. It is. It really is. Wow. How yeah. beautiful. Thank yeah. you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. What a way to connect with yourself. Yes. So important. Wow. Yeah. That is powerful. Oh, really yeah. powerful. Now, finally, what, as we're wrapping up here, how can our viewers get in contact with you? Well, that's very easy. Oh, All they good. Have to do is remember my name. Because <laughs> <laughs> the website is aniasophia.com. There we go. Very easy. <laughs> and it is and a beautiful book. Yeah. It's a beautiful <laughs> website, too. It really is full of amazing information and knowledge. It really is. Thank you. And then I know you have a great gift, free gift for our viewers. Would you mind talking about that and telling them how they could use it? Yes. I am. <laughs> I'm not quite sure which one it is. Do you have a note? Yeah, of yeah. It's you. Right. You're giving our viewers the sacred divorce ceremony. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, beloved viewers, this is gorgeous. When I set, sat down to contemplate this process i thought i knew what it was all about i thought it was all about tie cutting and mm -hmm. i thought i bet this is a shamanic tie cutting process no wow. what came through was this you totally claim the ways you did show up for that person mm -hmm. not as pride but as rightfulness Wow, yeah. So you sit with the one you are divorcing and you claim the ways you really did genuinely show up. And then you claim the ways that you actually didn't. Mm -hmm. So definitely not from a place of judgment or blame. Very important. But from a tender place of, I could have listened more. Mm -hmm. And you're not berating yourself. You're just being so sincere yeah. this can do one of two things when you've actually done the sacred divorce ceremony you can do it for real with your partner and you can be convinced this is it this is our moment we're going to separate mm -hmm. we so are i cannot stand this person <laughs> you can do the sacred divorce ceremony and it be so exquisite exquisitely gorgeous that the pair of you go huh 
maybe it's not over. <laughs> or the process is so rich and so complete that you do separate, but there is like a cleansed heart. Mm. Yes, you might be sad and sorrowful and miss him or her dearly, but you know you've done the right thing. There's mm. no regrets. Wow. What a powerful it, way. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a very gorgeous yes. thing to do. I think, I believe this is part of the conscious uncoupling mm. that is coming into our yeah. communities now. We're, we're yeah. all hearing about this. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's actually a beautiful way to end a relationship. It is. It is. And, you know, for a lot of couples, it may be the first time they're really being conscious yes. of what's been going on. So that may be why they were like, oh, wait, maybe, we, maybe this, this is supposed to work. Maybe we can make this work. Maybe that's where that comes from. Because I'm sure for a long time leading up to those moments, there's, you know, it's a lot of pain, a lot of, a lot of different powerful emotions in there. And maybe not always being conscious at times. So yeah. and being able to connect like that. So that's, yeah. that's a powerful connection tool, whether, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, a powerful way to end or maybe a new beginning, but it's a that's way, right. powerful yeah. way to connect. And yes. there's, that's the one important thing you need to do. You really need to do that I, with yourself. And if you're in a relationship, you need to connect. Yes. Consciously. Oh. Connect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Naya, this has been it's just so beautiful and so full of wisdom. Oh my gosh. It's so powerful for women. It really is. Is there anything still on your heart you want to share with us? Something I may have missed or something very important you want to leave with our viewers? Just to re to, to come back to that realization, maybe that I believe the woman's journey is twofold. Mm-hmm. It is again, that, that claiming of the authentic sexual self in all of her holiness and in all of her passion, her wild and her purity. And then that second part, the voice. Mm -hmm. Us ladies have to free that voice as well. Mm -hmm. And and, and also, you know, coming from the um, medical understanding, the cervix is exactly the same shape as our cervical spine, our neck. Oh, wow. Totally. These items are mirror images of each other. Oh, wow. Absolutely. And this is a biological fact. Wow. So already in biology, we can see, who hmm. these two regions are exactly the same. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Wow. Wow, you just enlightened all of us with that. Wow, (laughs) that is powerful. Well, I appreciate you so much for being here, Anaya. Thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you generously sharing your time, your expertise, and your journey with us. Thank you so much. And we're all so grateful for the amazing work you put out in the world. Thank you. Thank you, beloved. I bless your, your series, your summit. I bless every speaker that comes to you. Oh, thank you so much. And blessings to you and your great continued work in the world. Thank you. You're welcome.